Hi everyone, this is Athena. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Embrace Natural Beauty, where it has been my goal to share with you simple tips and techniques that have been helpful to me in my own natural hair journey, which has been literally five years, that have helped me to maintain my hair to keep it in good condition and retain length, which was always my goal, because I want all of you who are watching and who follow me to better maintain your hair, to keep it in good condition and retain length, if that happens to be your goal, so that you enjoy your hair and embrace natural beauty of your own. In this video, you're gonna see my wash day experience, as well as the results on that day and the refresher that I had to do. I'm trying to use a new combination of the Shea Moisture Low Porosity and High Porosity lines in my wash and go specifically because first of all wash and go happens to be my go-to hairstyle and then i've had very good um, experience using a low porosity line by shea moisture when i do my protective style and then twist it out which i showed you in my previous video the vacation hair protective style tips and so forth so I did a live broadcast on Periscope in which I got some feedback from some of my followers who shared with me that they've been using the Shea Moisture Low Porosity Leave-In Detangler with other gels. Since the Wonder Curl Gets at Hair Jelly happens to be my go-to styler for my wash and go, I used that with my first impression of the Low Porosity Leave-In Detangler by Shea Moisture. So after the feedback that I got from one of my followers, I decided I would try the Low Porosity Leave-In Detangler with another gel to see if I would get a different result. And so you're gonna see that here in this video. I'm super excited, I feel very optimistic that I'm gonna find the right combination and it's just a matter of time. <laughs> so hang in there, watch this video, I hope you enjoy it and see what I went through and what I'm going through as I strive to um, you know, reach better outcomes using these particular product lines. These are the products that I used on my wash day this week. They include, of course, the low porosity and the high porosity lines by Shea Moisture. So to start, as per usual, um, I'm showing you my previous um, hairstyle, which was the wash and go on the previous week using my staple product. So I'm just saturating my hair with water, getting it nice and wet in preparation for the wash. And as you can see, I am using my staple cleanser, which is the Damage Remedy uh, Shampoo by Aveda. I like to give my hair what it's accustomed to before I introduce new products. So I'm just doing a gentle first wash with that, rinsing that off. And then I'm now introducing the Brilliant line, also by Aveda, into my wash routine because it contains a sulfate that I want to use and concentrate on my scalp. So now with my second wash, as you can see, I'm deliberately concentrating on and getting this all around my scalp and also giving myself a little scalp massage. I pull the product all the way through to make sure it removes any and all product buildup. Now here's the fun. I am using a co-wash everybody for the first time. Yes, I'm using this co-wash on the high porosity section of hair in the front. So it'll be concentrated only in the front. I'm preparing my hair for the detangling, but I'm not doing it as of yet. I'm just putting the product on the hair and put it into these Bantu knots. And now I'm going to concentrate on the back of my hair, which is where the majority of the low porosity hair is. Most of the root in the back of my hair in this portion needs uh, special attention for low porosity hair. So I'm using the low porosity protein-free shampoo by Shea Moisture. And as you can see, I'm squeezing it through, making sure it's completely removing any and all product buildup, including all proteins. Now to deep condition, I chose to use the low porosity leave-in protein-free detangler as my deep conditioner. So I'm putting it on my hair and I'm detangling. And so I'm just gonna take a moment here. Um, some folks asked me about this in my last uh, video and also on my Instagram. That I just wanted to show you is the hair fall from just finger detangling. And so I'm gonna show you the steps. Uh, I'm gonna try and show you this as often as possible when I do these videos. I start with my fingers, then I move on to the wide tooth. And as I encounter tangles, I will take the comb out and detangle with my fingers. Then I go back with the comb. Okay. 
So I've just shown you both the wide tooth and the fine tooth side by side. And here I am, my final step in detangling is to use the fine tooth. And the reason for using the fine tooth is because I'm going to catch more hairs that I would not catch due to the large spacing between my fingers and a wide tooth comb. So if I were to encounter a tangle at this stage, I can remove it, which would eliminate tangles that would be ignored if I didn't use this fine tooth. Additionally, any loose hairs that I can obtain, that I can catch, I'd like to get with that comb. So there were no tangles to show you. I'm going to use the fine tooth comb over my entire head and by the time I'm finished I want to be able to show you what the hair fall looks like on that comb. So now I'm going to the front portion. Remember I had that co-wash on here so I'm just wetting the hair a little bit so it can be a little bit more <laughs> lubricated. Had to add some more product because it did kind of dry out a little bit and now I'm going to do my finger detangling in the front. And I had an opportunity to show you a tangle that I came across while I was finger detangling. And so I just decided to go ahead and show you me detangling that in the front. And of course I used the wide tooth and then the fine tooth as always around my entire head of hair. Now important to note about the front of my hair it is um, very um, very tender headed in the front. I feel everything in the front when I'm finger detangling, when I'm doing a wash and go, when I'm combing my hair I feel everything. It hurts. Uh, it's just very tender. In addition to that the front of my hair is where the high porosity hair is. The hair is more fragile. You can see I do have a front angle so it is going to be shorter but I also have pieces where you know I can tell um, they're weaker. They break more easily and so um, this is a very fragile portion you know of hair. It's close, closer as I get closer to the front, it's just a very fragile portion of hair. Plus, being high porosity, it is more tangly than the low porosity. Because if you recall, low porosity hair, the cuticle layer is laying flat, so it should be smoother. With the high porosity hair, the cuticle layer is raised. So I encounter more tangles in this section. Great, so I wanted to show you that whole thing. I want you to take a look at my comb. I have used this comb, all of the sections of my hair, and uh, that's all the hair that I caught. And now to deep condition, I'm using the High Porosity Mask by Shea Moisture. And I wanted to show you how runny it is. It's so runny, I just literally poured it into the cap. And since this is my first time using the product, on my hair I wanted you guys to get an opportunity to see what it looks like it's it's a fairly light kind of runny type of um, consistency and I'm surprised as many people have been that it's not thicker for high porosity hair and so I'm pretty much going to do the same on the other side and now I'm showing you my entire head is ready for deep conditioning I went and sat under my electric uh, heat cap which I've shown you in previous videos you can click on the link here to see what that looks like now getting ready to style my hair I was so excited because I remembered I'm not rinsing out the deep conditioning I'm using the low porosity leave-in detangler as my moisturizer and I use the heat to help it penetrate deeper so now I get to just style so I'm using for the first time Aunt Jackie's elongating curl jelly and uh, showing you the consistency, how nice and stiff it was. It's a really nice gel. It's not sticky, it's not tacky. It's very smooth and very easy to apply. And it lives up to its name. Look how long those hairs fell when I brought my fingers through. And now looking at the back, you can see how, how awful my part was that I selected for that portion of hair because I couldn't see it. That's okay, works just fine.
And now to the other side. I was about to apply the gel, but I noticed that this portion is a little dry, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the low porosity leave-in detangler. And I think I went a little overboard because after I apply the gel, some of the moisturizer is seeping out and landing on top of it. So here's the gel. <laughs> so I'm just raking that through and I'm, I, I, as you can see, I've already gotten it all the way through and now I'm noticing just how much uh, of the moisturizer I have on there too. But it came out very well, no complaints. I just used a lot of product unnecessarily. And then as I've been raking and smoothing, I just wanted to give you that quick glance. I don't have much hair that comes out when I do my wash and go rake and smooth because I've already thoroughly detangled my hair. And here I'm reacting to just how long my hair is being elongated with the Aunt Jackie's elongating curling gel. Yeah, these are some long curls. Wow is right. Wow indeed. So now moving on to the front of my hair. And I really had to stop and think about this again. Shea Moisture directions say to thoroughly remove the mask from the hair. So I removed it, I rinsed it out, and now I'm just um, squeezing some of the water out. But my hair is still nice and wet. I'm now about to apply the High Porosity Moisture Seal Styling Gel. It too is very runny as you can see and I have a lot <laughs> because I'm heavy handed that I'm applying to my hair. Very easy to apply. It goes on very easily um, and, and works through the hair very quickly. So it doesn't take long to apply. Doing the same thing on the other side. Got all that hair to move out the way. And so now that I'm raking it through... Um, I worked on equal parts, so now I have to give myself my little side part that I like. And that's simple enough because it's not a very heavy gel. And then I'm just going to go ahead and blend my entire, you know, head of hair, the parts that I couldn't see in the back. And so it looks fine, but I did notice that the front could use a little bit more gel. So I added just a little bit in the front. And again, I'm amazed at how long these curls are falling after styling. Wow. And here I am with my high definition camera and I realize um, you can't even see the bottom of my hair. That's how long these curls are. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks you know it looks pretty good it felt great you can tell there's a dramatic difference between the front of my hair and the back of my hair with the way the the stylers are appearing and so now I'm going to go ahead and and start um, diffusing. I did sit next to my dryer. My, I diffused first with my hooded dryer and I'll show you. You can click on here to see uh, what it looks like when I use my, um, my hooded dryer and I don't sit underneath it. I sit beside it. What I like about diffusing with the Diva Curl diffuser, uh, Diva Fuser, is I can get to the root which needs it the most because if you recall the majority of my low porosity hair is in the back and it's closer to the root and it takes the longest to dry so my hair stayed extremely damp for a very long time so I'm still in my cape because two reasons uh, my hair is still not dry <laughs> And uh, I was planning to do the front over. Um, but as I look at it, I'm like, the definition is there. It's a little frizzy. It's a little soft. Um, but the way it all kind of blends together in the front kind of works. I don't know. I'll feel it more. Maybe I'll leave it like this. So I just wanted to record that with this definition. And then I'll go on to my other 
camera and then I'm gonna go on the scope. I've been on break from um, diffusing my hair, which is taking forever. Uh, so it's still not dry in here, 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 all this. All of it is still damp. I can't go to bed with damp hair. And so I'll be up for a while. Just taking a break. It's just damp. It's getting big, it's getting big, it's getting big. Yeah, it is. But it is long, very, very long. So I'm gonna go on this scope and talk to the ladies for a little bit. The ones who are awake. My hair is still damp at the front. Uh, I just can't take it anymore. I'm tired. I have to go to bed. It's after 1.30 in the morning and I'm just tired. And all of my... That's all damp. And so I went ahead to bed with my hair still a little damp. I put my hair up in a pineapple and this is the very next day after I've already taken a shower. As you can see, I'm fully dressed. Just taking my hair down. I wanted you to be able to see what it looks like coming out of the pineapple. It's very stiff. I've been trying to share with some of you how I like to take my hair down without touching it, without poking at it too soon, allowing gravity to do its job. Um, and not put too much stress on the hair and it's much stiffer than it normally is after wash day and that's you know attributed to the the, the combination of the product that I used it usually doesn't look this cray cray uh, but yeah I'm, because of how it's kind of sticking together and it's so stiff I decided to do those um, really gently you know tossing my hair forward and back Okay, so notice how I gently did that. Um, this is a different product that I'm using, so it's falling a little bit differently than I'm accustomed to. But you, you don't want to just go in there and messing with your hair. Give it a chance to come down. Give it a chance. Just give it a chance. Oh well, so um, yeah, this is what it looks like now, and I'll show you guys. Because I'm not going to pull on it too much, I like for it to come down gradually. Right, so I was saying that I didn't want to pull on it any further. It hadn't been out of the, the, um, the pineapple that long, out of the scarf that long, so I really wanted to give it a chance to come down naturally. So I drove to the salon, which took you know, me getting to work is less than 10 minutes. Um, and so we didn't have much time to fall down. And again, granted, I'm just walking out the door, you know, to my car. And, um, you know, not too many people get to see how cray cray I look. I'll just walk into the salon looking a little cray cray, but that's okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, gently, gently touching it. You know, I don't like to pull on my hair if it wants to fall a certain way. Um, I'd rather just let it be that way and rather than pull on it too much so now I'm taking it outdoors so you can see perhaps in a different lighting that's not directly into the camera you can get a better sense of what my hair was looking like it's still kind of hard but here's another attempt so I most likely will be redoing it but I most likely do it when I'm at home I thought I was going to do it here in the salon but um, the, um, uh, I don't know, I can't see it quite as well, but that's what I got. These video clips are from the refresher that I did later that night and recorded on Periscope. So you can view the replay on Periscope. I will provide a link to that in the information box below. And so similar to the results that I got the first time I did a wash and go using the low porosity leave-in detangler with my staple Wonder Curl Gets at Hair Jelly, I pretty much got the same result with the um, Aunt Jackie's gel. And um, I'm not completely disappointed because I actually had an opportunity to try the gel that I had never tried before and was really impressed with it. So today happens to be day six of this wash and go using the uh, Shea Moisture Low Porosity Leave-In Detangler 
and the Aunt Jackie's Elongating Curl Defining Gel. So I did like the results overall of my wash and go, uh, but similar to the results that I got with the uh, Wonder Curl Get Set Hair Jelly, which happens to be my staple uh, gel. Um, in that low porosity section in the crown area, there is absolutely like nothing on it. It's it's as if all of the product just evaporates. So I'm still trying to get that right combination um, to achieve a wash and go using the Shea Moisture Low Porosity line and also incorporating the Shea Moisture High Porosity line so I can target those two specific areas of my hair that are most challenged when it comes to moisture retention. Uh, based on the feedback that I had gotten from uh, Michelle and my uh, Periscope broadcast, I do plan to try the Shea Moisture Low, Low Porosity Leave-In Detangler with Echo Styler. I know that some of you have been uh, performing wash and goes using the Shea Moisture Low Porosity Leave-In Detangler and have had successful wash and goes. I'd love for you to share with me, you know, in the comment section below uh, what your combination is and how many days you've been able to get with that combination. I look forward to hearing about your progress with these products and we'll be sharing my experience both here on YouTube and on Periscope. So please stay connected with me. Uh, you can chat with me live on Periscope on Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can participate by downloading the app on your smartphone for Periscope. I look forward to chatting with you. Thank you so much for watching.